What do you do when you get busted? Hi, this is Pastor Chad Richardson, campus pastor of Celebration Church, Mandible Covington Campus. Excited that you've joined me this day for a time of devotion and prayer. Praying that you press the share button right now so that others can join in for a time of devotion. What do you do when you get busted? Maybe have you ever had your hand caught in the cookie jar? I know when I was a kid, my mama had a cookie jar and it had the small mouth opening to it. And she would have those butter ring cookies. Maybe you know what I'm talking about. You'd always put them on your finger and eat them off your finger. Uh, I love those butter ring cookies even to this day. Uh, but she would have a jar full of them. And if you stuck your hand in, you always had to put your hand in kind of in a clunched up <laughs> bundle like that and reach down there and grab two or three. And if you tried to grab a fistful, you couldn't get your hand out. Your hand would get stuck because your fist was bigger than the opening. You had to drop them, grab two or three, and pull them out this way. And I remember one time her catching me when she told me to wait till after dinner. And there it was. My hand was caught in the cookie jar. <laughs> couldn't say anything. What was it going to say? Oh, the jar just jumped on my hand. <laughs> but you know something? We do that kind of stuff all the time. And you know, there were people in the Bible that did stuff like that too, where they were trying to say, oh, I don't know how this got here. We see Aaron, which was Moses' brother, do this very thing. Some of you might remember the story in Exodus where Moses was up on the mountaintop and he was getting the Ten Commandments. And while he was up there, the people of Israel went to Aaron and said, hey, we need to have, we don't know what's happened to your brother Moses, and we need to have a God we can worship. And so Aaron gathered for them uh, the gold and uh, rings and bracelets of all the women and children and the girls and, uh, and put them in the fire, melted them, and forged for them this massive calf that the people could worship. Matter of fact, they said, look, here is the God in which led us out of Egypt. And they began worshiping. We know it angered God. God said, Moses, better go get your people. Uh, Moses went down and saw what took place, and he confronted Aaron. And in uh, Exodus chapter 32, we see Aaron saying this when Moses confronted him about the calf. Uh, Moses said, I told them, this is Aaron, Whoever has gold jewelry, take it off. When they brought it to me, I simply threw it in the fire and poof, out came the calf. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing when you read the Bible, you see these little things and you can't help but chuckle because it's like, I've said that kind of same thing too. It's like, I threw something in the fire and poof, out it came. Or uh, there's the cookie jar, poof, the cookies. I don't know how they got here. It wasn't that my hand reached in there and grabbed them. They just fell out the jar somehow or another. I mean, everybody, including you, have said that kind of thing when we were confronted with something we had done. We got busted. And here's the deal. Instead of Aaron just coming clean and saying, you know something, Moses, I messed up. I felt peer pressure because that's what happened. The people gathered around him. It was intimidating. And Aaron fell to peer pressure. He took the gold and he forged for them uh, this golden calf that they would worship which enraged God, made Moses angry. He broke the Ten Commandments. He, he melted the gold, turned it into powder, and even put it in the water and made the people drink it. Gross, right? But if Aaron had just stood up to peer pressure, which he didn't, none of that would have happened. But instead, he bowed to peer pressure, and then he did the very thing that angered God, and then tried to say, I don't know how it happened. It just, I, yeah, I'm guilty of the gold stuff, but I just kind of like threw it in the fire poof, there it is. And we all know that was the stupidest thing he could have ever said because it was a complete fabrication of the truth. But you and I have done the same thing. Instead of coming clean before the people that busted us, instead of becoming clean before God, who sees all things, by the way, we will do the same thing. We will say, I don't know how my taxes got all messed up. I, I filled out all the proper forms knowing that we left off some intentional things or or. Man, I don't know. I don't know how that got there. I, it just showed up. Uh, oh man, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how that money got spent. I, I don't know. It was there before. We know it's because we stopped and got a coke and a and a candy bar, or maybe we made a bad investment without consulting anybody. I mean, we do stupid stuff like that all the time. And instead of owning up to it, we try to excuse it away and make it uh, and make it as though we weren't part of it. And here's the deal: we're not fooling anybody. We're not fooling God. And we're not fooling those that busted us. We got we got busted clean, and we just need to come clean. And here's the wonderful thing. I know we get, we get so scared when we are guilty of doing things about what's going to happen to us when people find out. The Word of God even says this. It says, 
If we're faithful to confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our, of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I love that passage because I mess up all the time. And I'm so thankful that God is gracious and he's willing to take my mess ups and, and make them into something for his glory. And really, it teaches me something in, in, in my spiritual life and it gives me the ability to grow in my faith. And here's the deal. For you right now, maybe you've been busted with something lately, but you still hadn't owned up to it. And here's the deal. You're never going to find blessings until you overcome this issue that you've got in your life, this guilt, this, 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 this thing that's going on in your life until you come clean. You're really never going to be able to find freedom or forgiveness or not forgiveness, but freedom or victory in your life. And I don't know about you, but I want victory in my life. But as long as I've got this stuff that I'm unwilling to confess, I am going to continue to receive uh, 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 losses in my life, no victory in my life. And, and I don't want that. I, I want I want to be uh, I want to be able to have victory. I want to experience freedom. I don't want to be in bondage. And the only way is instead of trying to excuse it away, just come clean. So are you ready to do that today? Are you ready to come clean with the things that you've been busted over? Because here's the deal. Even if you haven't been busted by mankind, God has already busted you. Why? Because God sees all. And here's the deal. The Bible also teaches us this, that our sin will find us out. And so while we may not have been busted by mankind yet, that doesn't mean that we won't. So why not just come clean before God about it now so that we already have the forgiveness that he offers us right here, right now. Don't be Aaron. <laughs> Don't be Aaron. Can I pray for you? Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you and love you for being a great and gracious God. You are so incredible and you forgive us. Father, while we're in the midst of our junk, while we're in the midst of doing the guilty things, while we're in the midst of doing the things that are not right, God, you offer forgiveness. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you that no matter who I am or what I've done, that I can be forgiven. Father, that doesn't give me excuse or license just to go on doing things I know that's wrong. But Father, when I do mess up, I know that you are there. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would take the mess ups of someone's life today and that Lord, help them realize that you have already busted them and it's time to come clean. I pray God that we would confess our sin and trust that we will be forgiven because your word says if we're faithful to confess, you're faithful to forgive and cleanse us from all of that unrighteousness, all of that junk. God, just as Aaron, Lord, that wasn't the end of his story. He messed up. He lied. But God, you still used him in amazing ways to be the mouthpiece of Moses, to be able to speak your truth to your people. And Father, I pray that we would understand too that just because we've messed up doesn't mean you're done with us yet either. You've still got much, much more to do in our lives and through our lives and around our lives. So God, I thank you right now for the cleansing that someone is receiving, for the victory that someone is experiencing, for the joy that's being restored of someone's salvation, Lord God. And I pray today for our world, knowing that we have a world that's such a mess. I pray right now for those that are battling the storms. Father, whether it's Hurricane Sally, Hurricane Laura, or one of the others that have come through or will come through in the future. Father, we pray for the pandemic that's affecting the entire globe in some form or fashion. And I pray that in our own local area, Lord God, that you would continue to move us forward, seeing numbers reduce, uh, economy open back up, and people giving you the glory and honor. I pray, Father God, for the local church, that they would, they would realize that we have multiple ways to be able to spread the good news of Jesus, and that we use every way that is available to us, and not, to, not miss out on a single opportunity. Lord God, I pray that the church would rise during this time and understand that we have victory and eternal life in Jesus and be willing to preach that to a world that desperately needs to hear it. I pray for that person right now that may be listening, the God that needs to have a relationship with you. I pray that they would pray this prayer right now in their own heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I know that my sin has separated me from you. I believe that Jesus came to this earth, died on the cross, and was buried and rose again. I believe that Jesus is the answer for my sin and I invite him to come into my life to forgive me of all of my sin and I make him the master and savior of my life. Now, Lord, help me to walk in your ways and live according to your truth in Jesus' precious name. Father, I pray for that person right now that's just prayed that prayer in their heart and they've invited Jesus Christ I pray that we as believers would be excited on earth as the angels are in heaven over one that has come to faith in Christ. 
And I pray, Father, that they may rise up and be part of a local church that would help them become all that you have designed them to be. Lord, I thank you so much for all those in leadership, God, those that we agree with personally and those that we disagree with personally. God, that we would pray for them just as your word has said, that they would be men and women of wisdom, that, God, they would hear your voice and heed your cries and heed your calls, Father God, for, uh, for, for godliness, and that they themselves would turn to you and live and lead according to your ways. Father, I thank you and praise you for loving us so much that you would send your only son, Jesus, to die for us. And I thank you for your Holy Spirit who is in us, that guides us every day. I thank you for your word of truth that you have given us to read and live by. I thank you for the opportunity here in America to live in a land that allows us freedom to, to preach, to sing, to worship, uh, Father God, to assemble, to do all that we do. Thank you for this land. And I pray that we would do all that we can to honor those who have given their lives for it and honor those who oversee it. And Father, may we honor you more than all things, knowing that you, God, are God over all things. And Father, we give you the praise, honor, and glory for who you are and what you've done. And we give it all to you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Press the share button so that somebody else can be challenged today. God bless.